All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sean is back in the house. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This is, of course, Blue Ridge Silverhound. And we have a really nice topic to uh, to kind of iron out and address today. Uh, kind of big deal, a little bit of news. Courtesy of uh, one of our live coin Q&A panel members, uh, Adam, Adam Chambers, um, uh, who you see quite regularly every week on that channel, uh, as with a few of uh, uh, other folks in our group, um, had recently gone to the uh, Chicago ANA World's Fair of Money show. All right, that was actually held in Rosemont, uh, right outside of Chicago, I think North Chicago, uh, from, from what Adam had told me. Uh, it was a great event, you know, uh, it was fun, exciting. Uh, he got to uh, uh, meet a lot of folks, uh, one in particular, very notable, and it came as kind of a last-minute uh, uh, announcement uh, for for the show, in that the uh, the new U.S. Mint director uh, was going to be in attendance. Actually, the U.S. Mint had a booth at the World's Fair of Money show here last week, and um, Mr. Chambers actually uh, had the opportunity to uh, quip some words with uh, Miss Gibson. Uh, about things uh, going on at the mint, and um, one of the things that uh, that Adam had kind of brought up, uh, more so tongue in cheek than anything else, like, "Hey, can we get more U.S. Mint errors coming out of the Denver Mint?" And uh, she had stated, uh, probably not verbatim to how I'm going to say it, um, "Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, the Denver Mint uh, has all, you know, they, their quality is high and tight." You know, uh, they certainly have all their ducks in a row. So uh, the opportunity to find some newer big errors and varieties is um, kind of bleak in, in the future. And um, I I believe that the Philadelphia Mint will follow suit. Uh, but we're not here to talk about Philadelphia Minted Coins. We're going to talk a little bit about, and this is going to be kind of like a two-part video, break it down a little bit so that it's not quite as long and daunting. We're going to talk about some of the most notable varieties that exhibit a Denver mint mark. Uh, most of them are on Lincoln Cents and Washington Quarters, which is fine because they're two of the most widely collected U.S. coinage series going today. So we're going to talk a little bit about my personal favorites. These are, of course, uh, notable Cherry Picker's Guide varieties, but in no way, shape, or form does this list and there's about five or six coins by the way does this list um in a nutshell describe the amount of varieties that exist uh on denver minted coins because there is so much more if we're talking about the the modern age of coins and we're we're going to use 1965 to the current date although you're you're on a screen here on pcgs's website with 1960 on there that's the one exception the reason why I'm using 1965 is that that signaled the end of silver in general circulating coinage. Uh, it was in 1965 that the U.S. Mint had trans transitioned over in a cost-cutting uh, measure to copper uh, copper and nickel uh, for a composition. Okay, Gone are the days of the 90% silver. Uh, everyone actually hoarded that uh, a, you know, a long time prior to the changeover. So, um, from that point forward, uh, Denver Mint has been known to have high quality standards, all right? In theory, you know, that's, that's what we've known, especially uh, in the much more ultra-modern coins. Uh, I would say anything beyond like 1990, 1999 or thereabouts, um, we're just, we'll use the turn, turn of the century, millennium. Um, we don't see nearly as many. Okay, but however, the few that do exist out there that are more important to collectors and treasure hunters, they are quite valuable compared to similar Philadelphia minted coinage. Um, they they, uh, they hang, you know, uh, neck and neck in, in a full race of value. Um, so the first one that we're going to talk about that you guys need to look out for, and this is a coin that I've found pretty steadily and regularly. These are out there in change. People have found these left and right. It's the 1960, uh, this is a dual variety type error 
or a variety. Sorry about that. Uh, it is not only a repunch mint mark, but it is considered a doubled die. It's the small over large date variant of this coin. So, um, so we have three different lines here. And uh, the, these are all uh, based off of color designators. So we have a brown line. We have red brown and then we have full red and and that applies more so to the mint state grades than the lower grades so the lower grades i'd probably use the brown line <clears throat> if you found a coin similar to this or you found this exact variety you would just click into this if you wanted to take a look at um ballpark kind of values uh of course we're on pcgs's website so a lot of the pricing is geared around graded examples some of these you don't even need to grade at all like the 1960 d over d uh small over large date in lower grades anything under a mint state grade you could just sell it the way it is if you wanted to or it'd just be a great piece to add to your collection of course when you say this mint state 60 brown here at 34 dollars it hardly seems worthy of grading anyways because of that value there but once you get into the much bigger uh more impressive grades the coin is worth a lot more so let's go ahead and explore what this one looks like um and uh by the way thank, thanks for popping in that this guy this will give you guys a little perspective it'll even uh be um really really good for you folks that are in the west coast area so um, this is the small over large date. Okay, you can see the top tail of the six kind of come in here on a small six. And then you have the, uh, the over punch of the larger date elements. Um, you see that in the zero as well. So here's the smaller zero. And then you have the much bigger zero that was punched over that. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a very impressive coin. I, I own one of these graded as a mint state 64. Uh, still reasonably priced. You can get one for around 100 bucks today. Uh, but I own probably a good other 20 examples in varying degrees of grade from, uh, I would say, high-end VF all the way up to Mint State Brown. And um, again, this is a coin that exists out there. It's one of the more uh, readily available dates to come across. Uh, same way with 1972, and that's why it's another date to look out for. Of course, those are Philadelphia minted coins. Uh, so this one right here also has that RPM, which is, uh, it sits right here. I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but there is actually a Denver mint mark that was punched inadvertently up here, uh, touching the date. So, uh, a mint employee had repunched a mint mark into its, uh, its actual suitable spot for the coin. But this is what the, uh, uh, the small over large date 1960D would look like again, the big telltale signs are the six with this extra nub coming in right here for the small six and then the two zeros overlapping each other one small one big all right so that's the um the first notable coin again this is one that a lot of people have encountered um but i would say a lot of people have also tossed these back um it's a it's a coin that's a little bit tougher to actually um attribute in lower grades um especially if you're just going by uh, things like uh, the actual lar uh, small over large date um, as soon as those devices become pretty well worn and smashed um, it could obscure the actual variety all right the next one that we have here is actually a big one uh, we've recently seen the sale on great collections of a 1992 d close am lincoln cent this is a much newer coin um, the this one exists in both the philadelphia and denver albeit the philadelphia examples are so much more rare and they're a little bit more expensive but go ahead and take a look at the respective values across the three different color uh color lines here full brown red brown and then red of course the full red examples will will command the most amount of money uh but yeah i mean you know we've seen a number of these in full red come up on the marketplace in the last few years and um the prices have impressed um a, a lot of folks uh, that that are either interested in it or they're just they just want to be um a witness to what is going to be a big sale and considering that collectibles all across the board was really really um um uh, hot it was white hot since the uh the pandemic period started uh we've seen some prices of these coins hit 
just astronomical numbers. And uh, some of them have kind of settled a little bit, but the close AM coins have always been expensive and they're going to continue to be that. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what you guys are going to be looking at here. Um, uh, again, this is a coin that is a lot more readily available today um, than the Philadelphia minted coins. So when you're looking at these, okay, and we're going to use just this here, you can see that the A&M in America are touching, all right? So this was a reverse die that was inadvertently used and it was intended for something else. Um, so they, they accidentally, the U.S. Mint uh, employees, accidentally used this die that was meant for uh, a different, uh, different coin or a different strike. Um, you're also going to notice that the FG initials sit further away from the base of the monument, and the G is going to have a much bigger, bolder appearance to it. So this is, this is again, another great coin to be on the lookout for. Uh, quite quite expensive, quite valuable, and it's going to be one of those coins that's going to pop out of nowhere when you least expect it. Um, the coin is wildly valuable in all grades. Um, it could be a beat up brown um, VF coin and it would sp still be worth at least $500 or higher. So definitely something that will uh, make a huge impact um, when you go to sell it. And uh, people are looking for this coin in all grades. You know, they want the affordable stuff and they want the expensive stuff. But, you know, there will be a butt for every seat, for uh, you know, and uh, it, it's going to be a coin that's going to continue to go up in value as the, um, as the supply begins to kind of thin out, uh, which it already has. And the last Lincoln that I wanted to talk about um, is not the 1995 Double Die Obverse. This is a very well-known variety that's been around since the day it was released. It was actually promoted all over uh, all over the news during its day. Uh, the internet was just coming into its own around this time, so you really didn't see too much in the way of newsworthy coin-type articles uh, regarding the 95 Double Die. Um, but this was certainly all over just regular TV news. Um, so not this one, but did you guys know that there is an impressive Denver minted double to die as well? Uh, this one right here, uh, is what they call FS 103. That's a cherry picker's guide variety. But if you look across the board, this coin is worth so much more money than the 1995 double die. Although the double to die Philadelphia coin, um, is out there in much greater numbers. This is a, now it's, that's actually a coin you could still find in circulation. But as a counterpoint, the 95 Denver double to die obverse is a lot more scarce. Um, there's only a handful of these that have been discovered. And um, the, the coin is incredibly valuable, even in circulated grades. Again, this is more of a classic case of, you know, there's going to be people that want the affordable version of this coin. And then there's also going to be people that's willing to pay um, obscene amounts of money to own high-end registry uh, level type of examples. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Uh, so that way you can see what we're looking at here as far as this doubling. Um, the doubling is quite nice on uh, the motto, In God We Trust. So when you look at this, you look at the date. Uh, it's maybe just a shred of doubling. You can see it actually on the mint mark, uh, right there because the mint mark was actually added to the working die, uh, or the, um, the working hub or the master hub, one of the two, um, as a, a regular part of the coin. They actually did not, um, punch this into the working die independently like they did on coins prior to 1990. Um, but when we go up here and take a look at the splits, in each of these letters in in God we trust and this is a very strong one very strong you're probably look at the word we that is phenomenal uh very strong a uh, very 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 dramatic uh doubling uh on this date that for the longest time most people did ignore because all of the uh the attention was on the Philadelphia minted coin but this one ladies and gentlemen if you are lucky enough to come across a mid state anything something that's going to be like a mid state 64 or 65 uh, full red would be ideal of course that's going to be a coin that's worth a few thousand dollars again um you know it, it's a very um impactful amount of money for this coin and uh with good reason it's quite scarce 
Um, there's not too many of these that are known, especially in the higher grades. All right, so we have a couple quarters to look at. Um, the first one, actually, there's a number of them, right? Um, for the Washington Quarter Series, uh, we have the 68D, all right, which uh, there have been a couple examples that really nice ones that sold on great collections here in the last month, uh, one of which sold last week. Um, there's also 69D over D RPM, another well-known one, although value-wise, um, it's not up there unless you have a mid-state example, but look at the 68D. Quite nice, quite valuable. And then you have uh, 1970D. Uh, there are a number of different uh, double the dies for this date. There's the FS101, 102. Uh, there's a couple double the die reverses as well. There's the 801 and 802. Um, so for this one, uh, the 102 is comparatively a little bit more pricier, if and only if you're able to find mid state 65 and higher. Uh, but do not sleep on the FS101 here. This is also a very, very strong double to die. And then when you see what this thing looks like, you guys will understand. Um, so when you're looking at this, the date, I mean, look at the doubled seven right there. Uh, the, the zeros uh, got a nice elongated look to it. The nine has doubling. Uh, the one's got the top and bottom notches. And then when you look at uh, like the motto, you're gonna see a little bit of doubling there as well. And Liberty will show just a shred of doubling. Not, nothing too crazy up here, but um, there's the letter Y. You can see the notching. And then the, uh, you know, at the top and bottom of the, uh, and this one here on the T as well. Uh, the top right bar of the T uh, is pretty crazy. But, yeah, your big attribute is definitely going to be that date. The 7, even in the lowest of grades, is easy to spot. Uh, but this is a good one right here. As you can tell, PCGS doesn't have too many high-end examples that they've showcased um, for their true views. Uh, they have an AU55 and a couple XF45s. So this is a um, a tough date to find uh, coins that will grade out mint state condition. This one right here is rather close, but you can tell that on the highest points of the coin, like here around the ear and that hair area, uh, will show a little bit of circulation wear. Um, so unless you have a, um, a source to obtain like pure brilliant uncirculated examples of the coin to cherry pick through yeah you, you might have to settle for a nice au example that's to be worth around a thousand bucks or higher so that's a good one there uh the next one that we have here we're gonna uh, fast forward 34 years uh to a coin that was quite controversial was this coin produced in error uh or was it intentionally made and i'm i'm more part of the latter as far as uh, uh what i believe in of the Wisconsin Extra Leaf uh, Quarters. These are 2004 Denver's, okay? They're, they're not Philadelphia's, they are Denver's. Um, and each of the coins, um, you know, especially in the much higher grades, once you get up here to 66 and higher, the coin is rare and wildly valuable. Now, these particular coins right here were released in the Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas region uh, when they first came out. And, uh, and here's actually a great photo of both the high leaf and the low leaf. We don't have, you even have to click into the other uh, listing. Uh, but these were um, in the southern, central southern region of the U.S. And even to this day, people are still finding these coins. Um, on average, they're selling for between $60 and $100. A lot of that has to do with grade, of course. Uh, but when we look here on the left side of the screen, uh, we have this extra uh, engraved double line right here uh, that is affectionately referred to as the low leaf. And then there's also a high leaf variant. Now a regular Wisconsin quarter will not, will have neither of these. It'll just be a blank area underneath this, uh, this corn leaf or husk or whatever you call it. Um, so there would be no extra engraved lines or anything like that to designate a low or high leaf. Um, but that's what you would look out for. And again, these are being found pretty much to this day all over the place. Um, but more people are finding them in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, anywhere around that area. Uh, I would even go into like Louisiana and maybe Alabama, Mississippi uh, because of uh, regionally where, where, where uh, the coin was dropped at. All right, and then the final coin is the most impressive, I firmly believe, uh, out of uh, all the other quarters I've talked about. 
And we can't do this video without at least addressing the white 4,000-pound four, 4, elephant in the room, the 2009D District of Columbia. This is the Washington, D.C. double die reverse FS801 quarter, uh, a coin that is going to live in infamy as, as being the coin that, like, can't believe this thing even left the mint um, <laughs> because it's, it's that wildly noticeable. Um, I mean, you would have to be asleep at the wheel to not notice this thing is rolling across your pocket change. But yeah, very, very valuable uh, quarter. Uh, th this is a coin that has been on my personal bucket list for ages. Um, th this right here, do not pay attention to the prices of $50 and $85. Uh, the most recent examples in, in beat up circulated condition have gone for no less than $500. All right, so um, when you see, you know, 50 bucks, 85, $200, don't pay attention to that. Um, that that does not figure into the real world values of this coin. Um, but, you know, the coin can be, uh, you know, like astronomically very expensive in mint state 66 and 67. I personally think they're going to be more expensive than the prices you see right here. So what does this one look like? Glad you asked. Uh, this one is crazy. So it's on the reverse and you're going to focus at the middle of the coin where, uh, the first three letters in Ellington, and you're going to see that doubled first three letters of that last name canted down, uh, clockwise, uh, rotationally. This thing is unbelievable. You're also going to have doubling in the black piano keys as well. Uh, you can see the first and second black piano keys are crazy looking. Uh, but yeah, this is the big one right here. Um, this is the one that very few exist, uh, especially in mid state condition, and very few of them actually make it into the marketplace. It's uh, quite scarce, and I don't think too many of these exist out there. Um, I mean, finding any 2009 quarter period it's quite tough because that was a very low mintage year for all, what, six of those quarters that came out that year. So again, another one to add to the list of Denver's that you could find out there. These have been found um, in the Midwest, on the East Coast, and even on the West Coast as well. So that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this one. Some pretty impactful Denver Mint varieties to be on the lookout for. Um, watch out for my Part 2 Compendium video where we're going to look at some notable Denver minted errors that have actually escaped into circulation. You're not going to want to miss that as well. That's going to go ahead and do it for this one. Happy hunting. Hopefully you guys find at least one of these because everybody else has. Uh, but that's it. That's going to go ahead and do it for this one. You guys have a wonderful day. Best of luck in your hunts. And uh, I shall see you guys on the next coin video. So long.